Hi, everybody. My name is Gary. Some of you know me already. Uh, I've been working with Cyril over the last couple of years. You probably know that I'm a devoted fan. Um, I discovered Cyril when I started shooting two years ago with a DSLR on a very light uh, tracking mount, the Move, Shoot, Move. And in the intervening time, I've kind of taken this thing up and uh, improved my equipment. And in that time, Cyril has com continued to evolve to a very great extent, especially recently. The subject of today's uh, video is Pixel Math. Uh, the first version of Pixel Math came out with 0 1.0.0. And it was a, a simpler version. You could only work on one channel, and then you'd still have to use the RGB compositing tool to combine your channels into a color image. Serial 1.01 uh, came out with a much more advanced form, which is what we'll be working with today uh, of Pixel Math. And 1.02 brought us a new tool for background extraction, and 1.03 brought us a new uh, stretching algorithm. Anyways, uh, Cyril also has been producing tutorials. If we uh, just go on their homepage, Cyril.org, and hit Tutorials, they've got a pretty good one on, uh, on uh, Pixel Math in here, Discovering Pixel Math. Uh, lots of good stuff in there, so I'm going to actually take today two use cases and uh, and just demonstrate how it's used a little bit. It's it's very powerful, especially considering that Cyril is uh, open source software. It's free. It's multi-platform. It works on uh, Windows 64-bit, uh, Linux, and uh, and Mac. So it's uh, it's good that way. Um, Anyways, let's look at the interface for a moment. Uh, this is the most ver recent version of the Pixel Math interface. And you've got your three channels here, uh, a checkbox. So if you're only working on a single channel, and we'll be doing a little bit of both these things today, um, you check the checkbox and only the RGBK uh, channel is available. G and B are, are blanked out. If you uncheck this, you can work in all three channels. Um, you have to add subs. The way that Pixel Math works is applying formulas to uh, subs, and that can involve combining them. So it's pretty powerful. There's a list of functions here. Um, I don't honestly understand a great deal of use in those, but there are operators that are very important, and we'll be using several, several of those through this uh, tutorial today. So just briefly, what I'm going to be doing is working with this uh, Eagle image. It was an M ASI 533MC, a color camera cooled, uh, with an L Extreme filter. And so the stacked.fit uh, Let's just open this up and look at it in an auto stretch view. I am assuming, of course, that people watching this video are somewhat familiar with Cyril. I can't go through everything uh, about it. But anyways, this is the uh, raw stack uh, for, with the L Extreme. And uh, I have done, let me see here. Whoops. This is one problem I have. You keep minimizing it. No, I've not done a background extraction. So this is just the pure raw stack. So let's just open up and use the background extraction tool. I'm going to use the new RBF. It does not need very many samples. So we'll just put it at 10 or 12, grid tolerance, low, add, dither, generate. <coughs> For a simple gradient like this, you could actually just place eight or 10 points around the image with RBF and uh, and see what it does. But let's uh, let's do this. I'm going to use subtraction and just hit compute background. And that is OK to see what we're working with. So let's just, uh, if I close out of this, it'll cancel and go back. So I have to hit apply. And this is now registered in the image. This is, by the way, M16. If we annotate it, M16. And, uh, of course, one of the other new features is the celestial grid with a compass pointing to north. 
And this is going to be subject of another video going into all the uh, photometry and astrometry tools that have been introduced. But today we're pretty much con uh, concerned with pixel map. So this is a raw balanced image from an L extreme. Now what I also did is I ran a script on the original set of subs, uh, the uh, serial extract HA and extract O3. So this uh, process would work if you had a monochrome camera and you only had those filters. Um, so what we have here is an HA extraction and I'm going to pop open the statistics window. This is going to be quite important in pixel math. Now this is ADU. We also have an option to select normalized, which is from zero to one, the luminance of each pixel. So the median here is 1.9 e to the minus three. E to the minus three just means you move the digital, the, the, period, uh, the decimal point over three digits. So one, two, three, so it's 0 0.0019. Is the, uh, is the median. For this initial step, I'm going to just use ADU. It's a little bit easier. Now let's look at, have, a, have a look at the uh, O3 stack. Okay, and I'm gonna hit execute here. This doesn't refresh when you open a new image. Median's about half, much, much lower. Um, so we're gonna have to do some balancing here. And there's also a gradient in both images. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the HA stack again and let's go back to background extraction and we're just going to do this quick and simple. Um, I could play with this for hours. You want to uncheck all the boxes that are on nebulosity for instance like that one. <laughs> Compute background. We'll see what we get. Okay that's brought in some more definitions so let's just let's just apply that and keep it simple. Now I'm going to save this as H, A, well, you know what, I'm going to stretch it first. Let's cancel out of this. Uh, we're going to do some stretching first. And I'm just going to do a histogram stretch. I think that's the easiest uh, for this purpose. Normally I would do a little bit more, but uh, we'll put it back in a linear view. And let's just give it a stretch. 1207, hit apply. Bring it up a little bit more. Uh, we don't want to clip anything on the dark side, but we can certainly be over there. Let's hit execute. Give it a little bit more. Whoops. <laughs> okay, that's why I hit apply each time. I'm back where I left it last time. Let's, okay, 11.6. He's starting to clip a tiny bit, 0.094%. Okay, I'm just going to try to go for roughly uh, 10,000. It makes it easier to balance the other image. 97.20, just a tiny bit more. 98.73, that's too much. Okay, 10,000, close enough. Let's hit apply and close. So we're gonna take this one, I'm gonna save it off as a new image. So we're just gonna call this ha underscore str dot fit. Save it as a 32 bit and 10,000 is our medium. Now we're gonna open up the O3. Same thing, we're gonna give it a background extraction use the same parameters and we'll see what happens good enough for me let's hit apply go back to linear and we'll give this one a stretch and we want to go up near 10,000 with this one as well you know what I'm going to just open this up a little bit And we'll take it. 7,500. And again, we'll bring in the darks a little bit. 
uh, don't want to clip very much, 0 0.009. Three, ninety-seven. Let's just bring this in ten to twenty. A bit too much. Let's just back it off a bit. Ten one twenty-eight. That is so close now. Ninety-nine forty-nine. Let's hit apply, and we'll save this one off as O underscore underscore str dot fit now if you're working with a hydrogen alpha filter and an oxygen filter that's two different shoots on your camera and the images will need to be aligned in the RGP compositing window they have an alignment function here but a lot of people don't realize that it's kind of limited if we go, I'm just background here. If we go to the registration tab, okay, it's not showing here right now. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, look at that later. Um, but anyways, in a nutshell. Uh, there's four types of registration that can happen, and they allow different uh, degrees of freedom. So we typically stack with the highest degree of freedom, meaning that the image can be rotated, it can be shifted a great distance, it can be twisted, it can be warped, and the registration function will line up the stars and make the images match each other. There are four different levels. The most restrictive one is called shift registration, which means that the image can only go left, right, up and down, and not very much. And that's what this registration system works on. So if you have rotation, you can't align your images here anyways. This works really well if you split channels and it's a pixel or two difference, um, that's fine. But if you're shooting two different sets over different nights, you probably have rotation, you probably have uh, a need for a greater degree of freedom in terms of uh, the registration function, so you'd end up registering anyways. So what I am going to do, uh, we are right now in this shoulder, Eagle Pixel Math, and there's our images. Um, there's the HA stretch and the O stretch. So what I'm going to do is use Cyril's registration function to align those before we go any further. So we need to go to conversion. We're going to add the HA and the O stretch. Add. And we are going to just call this align. Uh, and hit convert. So now if we go to the sequence tab, we have a new sequence, but they're not yet aligned. They're just converted into a sequence. And here are the two frames. I'm going to make sure that the first one, uh, the HA, is align1.fit, and that is the uh, reference image. And the O3 is the one that will become shifted. It is the uh, other image. So then we're just going to go to registration, global star. Okay, here's the diff. Sorry. Here's the different types of registration you can have uh, reflecting different degrees of freedom. So I'm going to just try similarity this time and see if it fails or not. Shift is the most restrictive, and we typically use filmography, which allows a great degree of freedom. But the, if it works with a shift, you'll get better stars. If it works with similarity, you get better stars within homography. So let's just give this a try. And this is just going to create a new sequence. Two images processed, zero failed, so this worked. So let's look at our registered sequence. Here's the HA and the O3. Okay. So now we can take these images into pixel math and start to work with them. So we basically have two channels here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add these images. 
we're going to take the R line one and the R line two, that's the registered versions, and add them into Pixelmat. We could take the HA stretch file if we wanted instead of R line one. It doesn't matter, that one didn't get changed, but the R line two has been shifted a pixel or two, so the O stretch would no longer work. So let's just open these. Now the first thing we're going to do is give them variable names. We don't want to be typing out these long file names. So we're just going to call this one HA. Enter to enter it. Double click to highlight it. And we're just going to call this one O. And now we can use these expressions up here. So what we could do is just do HOO. Let's give that a try. I'm going to turn off single channel. We'll go HA and we'll put O into this channel and O into this channel. So this will be an HOO blend. And we'll go to RGB and that's what the combined image looks like. You know, some people, a lot of people, don't want OO. They want something else in green. So we're going to look at a different pixel math expression. I am going to just bring up uh, a clipboard. I'm, you know what? Let's do a simple one first. What I'm going to do is go K star H A plus. Now shit, tilde is one minus. So it's one minus K star. Oh, and now the K is a parameter. So I'm going to go K equals. So let's go with 0.2. So what this will do is 0.2 times HA plus 0.8 times O. And this is our new blended image made out of partially hydrogen alpha and partially oxygen. Let's say we want that to be a little bit greener. So let's take it up to 0.4 HA. Now, it's kind of hard to tell right now what that's going to do. So what I'm going to do is just uh, we'll make an RGB image out of it. H A. We'll use this as a green channel and hit apply. Now something has wrong gone wrong. Okay. You have to check your syntax. If it goes black like that, there's some kind of mistake. So. There we are. So this is using uh, 0.4 hydrogen alpha. Let's go back to 0.2 and we can see the effect. And let's go to 0.6. I think it's going to create too much green in there. So let's go back to 0.3. Try that one out. So this is the power of this. You can experiment and play to your heart's content until you hit close. And even if you hit close, until you close Cyril, you can bring it back and it will be restored. I think I like just point two. Maybe we could add, uh, well, we could do the same thing. I'm gonna go O star 1.1, whoops. In the blue, which is breaking a rule, the sum should never be more than one. But let's just see what it does. Okay, it brings in a little bit more blue, makes the whole thing a bit brighter. Um, I think I can live with that. I don't think we've uh, clipped anything. So there's a very simple uh, way to combine HA and oxygen to get a, an RGB color image. Now, just to demonstrate some other abilities in this field, um, and I learned this next procedure working by watching YouTube in PixInsight tutorials. The tools are similar, not identical, but uh, Cyril's pixel math is powerful enough to work the same way. So what we're going to do this time, I'm going to have to create a new single channel, and I'm going to have to create an intermediate image uh, to work with that. So. I'm going to bring in a function. It's going to be right here. Sorry.
there we are. This is HA times oxygen raised to the power of one minus HA times oxygen. So this is called inverted pixels. When you have one minus, uh, you're taking something and then going one minus something else. And the power of this one is that in places where HA and O are bright, it's going to be more like a HHO, and where they're dim, it's going to be more like an HOO. So let's just hit apply and see what that does. Okay, now this gives us a new image. Now I could copy this down into here and keep building around it more expressions. Starts to get complicated. So what I am going to do is save this off as a new image. It's essentially storing this as a function. And then when we go on, we can use this image uh, to recall this function. So let's just save this off. I'm going to call it f.fit function 32-bit. And now we're going to add that into the pixel math equation. And we're going to give it a variable of f. OK, now let's keep building on this now. I'm going to take this function, again, inverted pixel. It's f times ha plus 1 minus f times o. So this multiply will be, this, this image will be multiplied by ha, and it will be, have added 1 minus this times oxygen. So it starts to get complex if you didn't create that f image. Let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so conceivably, that is a new green channel. So I'm going to save this off again, just to make further steps simpler. We'll just call this sin green. Save. And I'm going to add sin green as a variable. Now I have to scroll down to find it. I'm just going to call this one SG as a variable. So let's go back to HA for red. I'm going to do this. We're going to use SG for our green channel, and we're going to use O for our blue channel. Let's see what that does. That's a little bit different, um, whether you like it or not, but it's brought in more green in places where HA and oxygen are bright and doesn't affect the background of the image at all. So it's, it's an option. Um, it's kind of a cool option. Now in this one, I think I would just call that done. We've hit apply, we can close it. At this point, you can do any other processing on it, on it but it does not yet exist on the disk. It is just in memory. So you do have to save it off. Um, it doesn't exist yet, so it just comes up when you hit save as a new empty image. So I'm just going to call this one uh, pm.fit and save it. Now at this point, it's already stretched. It's in a linear form. And actually, as soon as we stretch the subs, we could have exported them as 16-bit TIFFs, run them through Starnet, run some denoising on them, and then convert them back into fits because that's one thing about pixel math the input images have to be fit they cannot be tiff and they all have to be the same bit depth so far i'm working in 32 bit that's easy with Cyril. everything gets converted into 32 bit but if i was going to export this for starnet now i would call it uh, uh, m16 dot tif and when I hit save, I would hit 16-bit. And there's no processing steps here because we just created this from a composition. And there is also no plate solving remaining. That's all been lost. You can't annotate it unless we re-plate solve. But this thing is stretched already. That might be difficult. So that can go off uh, to uh, a TIFF, which then can be put through Starnet to get rid of the stars. You can do all your processing and add the stars back in. The stars, once you've separated them, 
the star mask can be made in Cyril and it can be added back into the image in Cyril with pixel math. But honestly, I, after StarNet, I take the starry and starless image into GIMP and you just subtract, subtract the starless one from the starry one to get your star mask. New from visible, there's your star mask. Put that in addition mode and then you can add it back in very easily anytime in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever. So I don't think I would use pixel math that way. So that is kind of what I wanted to talk about for creating a synthetic channel from hydrogen and oxygen data only. And there's a million things you could do here to change how it looks. Uh, you could maybe try that synthetic channel as blue. Why don't we have a look and see what that does? Everything still remains. Let's just put under green, we'll put blue in there. Oh, I'm sorry, we'll put uh, O in there and we'll put synthetic green into blue. Different look, bit of magenta. Um, that's probably not optimal, but in Cyril you can go control I, then do a remove green noise, and then go control I again and the magenta is gone. So it's a different looking composition altogether, but uh, nothing like SHO, but uh, you get the idea. But I think my own preference would be for synthetic green here and oxygen here. That gives you enough color definition that you can play with saturation and, and curves in the color channels later and, uh, and uh, go from there. Now this thing is not color balanced horribly well, so let's just do a quick uh, color calibration. Just find a nice dark area to flatten the black. Background neutralization and close. Let's have a look at that histogram again. Now we're now we're color balanced in in the majority of the image, which is the darker areas. Okay, end of part one. I'm going to get set up and start on part two. Hi, I'm back. I also wanted to mention one more thing uh, about where I learned about power of inverted pixels. Uh, I used a tutorial uh, from thecoldestnights.com uh, and it is dynamic narrowband combinations with pixel math. It's actually very good. If you uh, If you go in there, he uh, has a fairly thorough explanation of how it all works. And I was able to uh, um, scrape a few formulas for future use. This is the one that we just used. If you have uh, sulfur data, he's got an RGB thing. Uh, this is the same as what we just did above without the function of F. It's writing it longhand all the way through. But here he uses for red, sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen hydrogen alpha, green, what we just did, and blue oxygen. For a show, he's got a different formula if you have sulfur data. Um, so it's a pretty good resource, actually, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Okay. Um, Okay, our next project is going to be adding some H-alpha data uh, to a broadband uh, galaxy image in this case. So it's a little different than working with nebulae. In this case, let's just have a look here. I have a uh, about an hour and a half with an L-pro filter um, with an 8-inch f4 newt. So it's a fairly fast scope. It could be better, but this was shot when... It was not dark ever, but only moderately dark at midnight and coming back to moderately dark at 3 in the morning. So I only had basically from 1.30 till 3 to work with this one. Anyways, um, this is the L Pro image, uh, color view. I've done a background extraction and a color calibration. The other image we have is an L Extreme uh, image. I shot about an hour, five minutes, but I could only use about eight of those. So it's 40 minutes of integration for this one. So this is the red channel 
that we're going to be trying to integrate into the L Pro image. And there are bright areas in some of the areas that I'm interested in. So the first thing to do is to split off the red channel because in pixel math we're working by channel. So we're going to go extraction, split channels, and I don't really want the green and blue off this one. We're just interested in the red. So I'm, and I'm going to call this one red for red X for Alex. L extreme. Okay, now I'm going to open the the pro one. And for this one we're going to need all three channels, but we'll be combining the red from the L extreme with the red from the L Pro. So we're also going to split channels here. So I'm just going to go R G and B, apply. And now we have all these uh, single channels. Now the first thing to notice right away before anything else happens is that if we open the red extreme, uh, notice the orientation of the image and the R from the R L Pro, they're opposite. A meridian flip happened in there somewhere. So the first job here is going to be to uh, make a sequence uh, and register it to get, a, to get perfect alignment. So I'm just going to add those two in there, red from the L Pro and red from the Extreme. So those are two grayscale images. I'm going to create a new sequence called Align. Okay, then we're just going to hop over to Registration and register it. Okay, 179.924 degrees. <laughs> so that appears to have worked. So we'll have a quick look at those. Okay, the reference frame is the L Pro image, and the uh, second one is the number two here is the L Extreme red channel. And they are now aligned with each other. So I'm just going to close out of here. This is kind of a multi-step process. Uh, the first job is to subtract part of the red image from the H alpha image to get the places illuminated, uh, mostly illuminated, that are only brighter in the extreme image, relatively brighter. So this is uh, linear, by the way. Uh, we're in auto stretch view. I'm going to do this linear, and then I'm also going to, at the end, go through a quick rundown on doing a stretched view. Uh, you can do either. Some people subscribe to linear. Some people subscribe to stretched. In the previous example, the, um, the um, Eagle Nebula, if you do inverted pixels, as in my second processing demonstration there, you have to be stretched. If you're just doing channel, channel com combinations to make a synthetic channel, it can be linear or stretch. But here it can be either, so I'm, I'm just working linear for right now. So anyways, what we need to do, I'm just going to clear all these out of here. We need to add our channels. So our line one was the L Pro and our line two was the L Extreme green channel or red channel. I'm also going to add in the green and blue from the L Pro. Let's just bring all this into pixel math right now. So this one is blue. This one is green. I'm just giving them variable names now. Uh, this is our line one. So that is going to be our simple red channel. And this one, our line two, we're going to call HA. Done. So let's go HA, enter. And this is it. Now I'm going to pop open a statistics window. This is going to be kind of a friend to us. And we're mostly interested in the median value. That's basically the offset in the image, the amount of luminance um, that's everywhere. And uh, anything brighter than that is part of the image. Anything darker than that is, is kind of not part of the image, but it's necessary to offset it from pure black. 
and every camera applies offsets, so it's a term you're probably familiar with. Um, I'm going to just bring in the R, and I'll hit execute on this, and we'll see that this one is twice as high of a medium. It doesn't really matter too much as long as they're somewhat close and in balance. But what we're going to do, stage one here, we're going to take the HA minus a scale factor times r. And k is going to probably be somewhere in the scale of 0.2 to 0.8. And that's the scale factor. We only want to subtract part of the red image. So let's just hit apply and see what we get. OK, that's too dark. So I'm going to go down to, we've subtracted more of the galaxy core than we should have here. Go to 0.1. Okay, that's almost in balance, although we will be adding the luminance from this image to the red channel. So this will bring in a bit of color to the core. I'm just going to try 0.12. Okay, I think, I think we can try 0.11. And again, with the stretched image, it's going to be a different scale factor, 0.2 through 0.8, whatever it takes to get kind of a flat background, leaving only the luminance that you're trying to add to the other image. And of course, the stars are here. Um, you'll see that that kind of works out okay in the end. But let's go with this one. K is 0.11. Hit apply. Now I'm going to see what the median is. Uh, now I need a normalized value. So I'm clicking on normalized. Okay, so it's 1.91 e to the minus 4. So that's something I am going to write down. Uh, okay, so we're going to call this one. We could just keep working with that formula, but I, I think what I'm going to do is save this one off, and we'll just call this H-A-N. H alpha nu. And it's linear, it's warning me about that. And now in pixel math, we'll bring that one into the equation here. Uh, there it is. And I will give it a H A N. Give it a variable name so that we can work with it. I'm just going to open that up a little bit more so we can see the variable names. Okay, uh, so the next thing we want to do is take the red channel. Let's just open this up to all three channels now. G and B are in there now and see what it looks like. Okay, now what we want to do is take the red and add a scale factor again. Let's just go L star. And we want to take our H A N H alpha nu minus the normalized median value of it. So 0 0.00019, or we could go 1.91 E minus 4. And let's just try that. Now, I haven't defined L yet, so if I click OK, this is going to fail. So down here in parameters, we need a comma. L equals, let's just start with 2 and see what happens. Again, we're applying a scale factor to this to find a balance point. And it might be 2 through 8 or 10, depending on the input images. So let's hit Apply. OK, something has failed. R plus two times we forgot a closing bracket and I leave these errors in the discussion there we go okay it hasn't added very much so let's take L up to four okay now it's starting to come in some color there let's take L up to six okay now we're starting to get some of that red showing up and you can play with this infinitely to get to the point that you like. That's maybe a little bit too much. Go seven. 
and there it is. <coughs> now there's a bit of a red tinge to the background, so I'm going to introduce another function. We're going to the if function, and for this we need. You know what? I'm going to just uh, cut or cut this out of here. Go R apply. And we're going to go to execute again. Now I need a median for the R channel. So this is point zero, zero 0.001 is the median. Okay, so now I can paste this back in where I was. Closing bracket. We're going to go if open bracket. Now comes the condition R is less than that median value. So 0 0.001, comma, condition if true, we'll just use the red channel. Condition if false is after the second comma. So if red is below the offset level, we will not be adding any H alpha to it. That should protect the background from the red a little bit. Now the red channel here is very noisy because this H alpha data isn't great. It's a very short integration. So some of the noise is gonna exceed that threshold. But uh, by putting it in this if condition, um, you take much of the addition of red out of the background and only the red channel is used. And then if, if it's above that level, R plus H alpha nu is used, hit apply. Okay, we have done something wrong again. And we are missing a closing bracket again. There we are. And uh, from there, of course, a person can stretch it as you wish with an arc sign stretch and apply processing and turn out a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice uh, result. Uh, the stars aren't great here also. Um, it's minute. I've had collimation issues. It actually turns out it's the coma corrector. It does not sit flush every single time. There's always a bit of turn to it. But uh, that's another story. Um, but this is the crux of adding H alpha to a galaxy. And by doing it this way, uh, we're not discoloring the core. Um, okay, and the other thing I was going to mention is that the median here is a above 1.0 or 0 0.001. So I'm going to just bump this one, take off a bit more median to 0 0.0011 and hit apply. Yeah, and that cleans up the background a lot. That took it out and still relieves more of the galaxy. And then maybe we can take this up a little bit and see how that looks. Yeah, and the last thing a person might want to do is I'm going to just copy this and we're going to go B plus. We're going to add a little bit of the H alpha to the blue channel. Point one. And we've got an extra bracket in there because we don't any long. Let's just give that a look. You know, that just kind of theoretically brings uh, a more natural color to those nebulae by adding a little bit of blue to the, or a little bit of H alpha to the blue channel as well. And we could also put in a similar if statement to avoid uh, staining the background with blue. But uh, okay. So let's uh, next have a look. I'll get set up for a second and uh, be right back. Let's next have a look at uh, doing this with a stretched image and you'll see how the scale factors change. Okay, I've changed directories and this time we're gonna be working with a uh, stretched um, LPRO image and a stretched L-Extreme image to the point where the medians are similar, not identical. A person could also use the linear match function in Cyril uh, to align them, but that's not necessarily appropriate for what we're doing here. Um, so anyways, let's just go into pixel math now. And we will bring in the blue, green, and red for 
the L Pro image and red from the L Extreme image. I've already split those channels. And both those images were, uh, well, still linear. They were uh, color balance, background extract, black, background flattened, and so on. Okay, so let's just uh, give these ones uh, variable names. This one was our R, and this one was our HA, and hit enter. So let's just, uh, I'm going to use single expression as turned off at the moment, so all three channels are live. Let's just put in R, G, and B, hit apply. This is kind of our starting point from the L Pro image. Uh, this one is a little bit more processed than than the uh, completely unstretched one I worked with in the in the last example. There's a bit better saturation and whatnot, but the nebulae are still fairly colorless in this. So again, I'm going to go back to single channel. So if I hit apply, it's only the RBGK that's being acted on again. So again, we're going to start out by going H A minus a scale factor times r and we can start out with our scale factor at 0.2 and we'll just see what it gives us okay and at this point we've got a little bit of lightning going on right in the core you can tell i played with this before earlier and uh, 0.21 let's try 0.25 Hit enter. Okay, that's probably getting pretty close to what we want. Maybe 0.24. Okay, let's go with that. Sorry, force of habit there to close whatever I'm working at. Okay, so what I'm going to do is see what the median on that is, normalized. This time, in this case, it is 0 0.0863. So I'm just going to add this in, minus 0 0.0863. And this is what we would actually be adding to the L Pro image. So rather than save this off as HA new this time, I'm just going to put brackets around it to isolate it a little bit and then we can start adding this to R. So we're going to go R plus K times what we had in brackets here. And I, I, I guess I'll just reuse K. Nope. I'm going to go have to go to a different variable name. L. So comma delimited, comma L equals, let's just start off with three and see what happens. Okay, and let's turn off few single channels. So now we're combining R, G, and B. And that's pretty strong. So let's just take it down to two. Sorry, tooltips in Cyril are sometimes an issue. Okay, and now I'm going to play with the offset that we're subtracting. Let's just try 0 0.8. And that brings more red into the... Uh, arms of the galaxy and whatnot. So we'll go back and that preserves the color away from the nebulous a little bit better. If you see in stretched, we're getting into a much lower scale factor. And the other one, I think it was something like eight. Let's just try one. Oh, enter does not work when you're in the parameter window. That's not bad. Um, we've brought in some color. Now again, we've also brought in a bunch of noise to the red channel because my HA data was so poor. But uh, that's not horrible. And again, we can put in an if statement. So let's start at the front this time. And down here, they have all the operators. So if you wanted to get 
Okay, they don't have if there, but they have all the comparative ones. So I'm going to type in IIF, and then opening bracket. This is the beginning of the uh, statement and closing bracket. Let's keep our bracket straight. So if R, now I forgot to get my median on the R. No, I didn't. 1.106. R, and I can go over here and find less than. It's easier just, but if you click on any of these, it tells you what it is, and double click will insert it in there. R is less than. You know what? I'm going to just to confirm my medium, control X. Put in R, apply, hit execute. Yeah, 0.1062. So I'm going to paste that back in. What I if R is less than 0 0.1065, we'll go slightly more to medium. Then common condition if true, we just use the red tail, comma, and the rest of it is condition if false. So this will cause it to only apply uh, the addition of HA in places that are brighter than the median of the red channel. So if there was any red staining in the background there, there is no longer. So now we can play again a little bit with, with our L. Okay. Like I say, I have had issues sometimes with tooltips in Cyril. And I like that. It's all good. Um, and we could call that done. So it's two stages. HA minus a scale factor times R. And then R plus a scale factor of HA minus median of HA. And this way you get only, only get color um, in the areas where the HA is relatively brighter compared to the rest of its image than red is compared to the rest of its image. And that is kind of done. So at this point we could close it and you could do any other processing you want. I mean, we could go on and stretch this a little more. Um, you can see here the red channel, something funky has happened here based on the pixel math kicking in above a certain level and adding some red in there. Um, and we could also do a color calibration just to balance off the background. Let's see what that looks like, actually. It looks pretty good right now. Background neutralization. Go again and have a, yeah, now our RGB is pretty much lined up. Okay. Whatever it is that a person wants to do from here, uh, you could take it out to uh, other software as a 16-bit TIFF, take it starless, do whatever processing that you want to do, and life is good. I'm just going to stretch this a smidge. Okay, now these are sticky. There's something going on. Cyril's not reacting very well with my uh, capture software. No, that's not working. Okay, let's do a little bit of an arc sign on it then. Yeah, something like that. We'll just bring it up a little bit. Hit a pie. Now this image right now only exists in memory. It hasn't been saved. And the save box is disabled because it doesn't have a file name. So we knew it to save as and give it a new name as a fit file if you want to fit. Or you could just do it uh, as a TIFF. And hit enter. If I'm going to go to Starnet, I would make it a 16-bit uh, integer. And hit save, and then you've got your image saved. Um, so that's kind of the heart of what I was trying to do with this video. Um, I hope that uh, that has been a little bit useful to you. And uh, my next 
tutorials, if and when I can get to them, will be about other changes in Cyril over the last several months. There's been a few cool things coming along, and uh, I'd like to run through those as well. Thank you.